This week we're talking about knowledge, while we take a look at the story of someone who got some information from a very surprising source. Hey, I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke. And we're talking about knowledge, which is learning something new so you can be better at whatever you do. Okay, what are we doing today? We're gonna take a drink of water. Oh. Done. No, I mean this water. Uh, what is that? <laughs> this is water from the creek that runs on the back of my neighborhood. <laughs> Hold on. Have you even looked at this? There's, there's got to be stuff that's alive in there. Yep. I am definitely not drinking this. Well, I didn't say we we're going to drink it like this. I discovered online how we can make our own filter right here. A filter that will legit clean this water. For reals. And you're saying we should trust the internet? Kids, do not always trust the internet. Also, please get help from an adult to do this. Well, I'm saying we should boil the water too. Boiling water for at least three minutes will kill all pathogenic bacteria, viruses, and protozoa. That helps, but you're still gonna have to convince me about that filter. Well then, let's make it. Step one. Cut the bottom off a plastic water bottle. Now what? Step two, place a paper towel in the mouth of the bottle. Perfect. Step three, pour in a couple of inches of charcoal powder. I think that should be enough. Ready for pouring. Perfect. Step four, pour in a couple inches of fine sand. 
Step five, pour in a few inches of small rocks. And there you go. This is finished? Yep, all ready for our creek water. <laughs> all right. Here goes. How long is this supposed to take? Yeah, we should probably time lapse. What do you think? I think it's impressively free of life forms. Ah, what are you doing? We still have to boil it. Oh, <laughs> right. Hot, 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 hot. Oh. Yeah, better let that cool down first. We gotta check out some river water in our story today. It's time for the story before the story. Today, we're in the fourth book of the New Testament, John. But before John, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into a relationship. So, at the right time, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. As Jesus grew older, he became wiser and stronger and more pleasing to God and people, which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone. Now, you might remember that Jesus had a cousin, right, who was six months older. His name was John, and he had been sent by God to help get people's hearts ready to hear the words of Jesus. Turn away from your sins. The kingdom of heaven has come near. People streamed out from Jerusalem and the whole region of Judea to see the show, and many people actually listened. John baptized these people in the murky water of the Jordan River as a sign that from now on, their lives would be different. I baptize you with water, but after me, someone is coming who is more powerful than I am. The Jewish religious leaders heard tales of this dynamic new guy on the scene. So they sent priests and teachers to discover just who this John was. Who are you? Are you the one God promised to rescue us? <laughs> I am not the Messiah. Well, then, are you Elijah? No. What about the prophet? Nope. Just give us an answer. I'm just a messenger. But someone is standing among you whom you do not know. I am not good enough to untie his sandals. God had already spoken to John about the Messiah. God told him, you will see the Spirit come down and remain on someone. He is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Now around this time, Jesus himself came to John at the Jordan River. They were cousins, but John already knew that Jesus was special. I want you to baptize me. What? No, I need to be baptized by you. So why do you come to me? Let it be this way for now. It is right for us to do this. It carries out God's holy plan. So John dipped Jesus down into the waters of the Jordan. And as Jesus rose up out of the water, God sent his spirit to rest on him like a dove. A voice from heaven echoed, This is my son, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. Now maybe this is when John recalled God's words and put all the pieces together. Jesus was God's chosen one. The next day, John was with several of his followers and spotted Jesus walking past. Look, the Lamb of God. Unlike the religious leaders, these men were quick to hear the truth about Jesus. They hurried after him. Rabbi! Jesus turned to the two men. What do you want? One of them named Andrew said, Rabbi, where are you staying? Come, you will see. Andrew and his friend followed Jesus and spent the rest of the day with him. They were so amazed by Jesus that Andrew immediately went and told his brother, Simon Peter, that they had found the Messiah. Then Peter began to follow Jesus too. These men heard the truth about Jesus and immediately followed him. The religious leaders heard the truth, well, and didn't believe it. But some of John's followers heard what he had to say, 
and didn't like it. Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the river is baptizing people. You know, the one you told us about. Everyone's leaving you and following him. It was true. Many people had begun to follow Jesus instead of John. But John wasn't upset. You yourselves are witnesses that I said I am not the Messiah. I was sent ahead of him. He must become more important. I must become less important. Well, yeah, but are you, like, okay with it? The Father loves the Son and has put everything into his hands. Anyone who believes in the Son has eternal life. John had spent his life listening to God, so he discovered the truth about Jesus and shared it with everybody he met. And everyone who truly listened knew that Jesus was the one to follow. The end. So, wait, Jesus and John were cousins, right? So, do you think they ever played with each other? Well, you know, we don't really know. They didn't live near each other, but what we do know is that at some point, God made it clear to John who his cousin Jesus really was. Yeah, then John changed what he was doing to point people to Jesus. And right after that, Andrew and Peter started following Jesus too. That's right. When you discover something new, it can change you. So, what's our part in the story? Well, we learn new things all the time, right? But just learning something doesn't matter until you let it change your thoughts and words and actions. The most important new thing you can discover is that Jesus is God's son. Once you know who Jesus is, you can choose to believe in him and follow him. God's spirit will help you to be more like Jesus. And that knowledge will show up in everything you say and do. And as you follow Jesus, you'll start to see and learn other new things too. Maybe you learned that some kids and family in your own community don't have enough to eat. Knowing this could make you more grateful for what you have and more ready to share. Yeah, you might even start a canned food drive to help. Or maybe you discover that that kid at school that you thought was really rude is going through some really tough stuff back at home. That knowledge can change how you think about them and how you treat them. Yeah, I mean, there's no end to the new things you can discover and how you can grow. See you next time. So here's the thing. When you discover something new, it can change you. Is that the stuff we filtered? And boiled. Hold on. Cheers. Oh yeah, that's way better than my water at home. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time.